Hello everybody. Um, I had a, a, well a customer had an issue with an engine that wasn't idling properly or wasn't starting up properly and obviously it turned out to be the MAF um, the wrong way around and a massive air leak that was causing the problem. But I thought what I would probably try and do is I'm going to do two videos. Uh, I have a JZ engine so I'm going to start off with this one and I'm going to show you guys kind of what happens in relation to whenever there's something wrong with your MAF sensor. Okay, so for now, I've got this little air box on. Um, I don't know what I've done with my original GS300 air box, but this one will do for now. So I'm just going to show you a couple of things. So effectively now, I've got it exactly as it should be. Obviously, it's, it's, it's an air box, so the MAF sensor can only go one way. We're going to plug it in. I'm going to start it up, and then you're going to see it's all going to start up and everything's going to be fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating problems and kind of showing you what it's going to do. So first of all, let's just start her up. Okay, so you can hear everything is happy, everything is fine, no dramas. All right, so things I normally see on the swaps, you guys end up with just little pipes like this with your mass airflow meter in. So what you can actually do is you can put these the wrong way around. Uh, unfortunately, in my case, I've got an air box so I have a very limited span on what I can do in terms of putting it the wrong way around. But this is as pretty much as good as I can get. Let me have a look. It's for the most part down. So it's kind of like uh, slightly the wrong way around, a little bit like that. But I'm going to show you what it's going to do. So basically you're going to hear how it's going to struggle to start. And it's not going to read the airflow properly. So bear with me. Okay. So... You would think that these little maths, because they're so small and because they're so, um, you would think no matter which way they are, they're going to read the air. I mean, it's a math airflow sensor, it's just passing air over a wire, but that is not the case. Put these the wrong way around and they are really, really not happy at all. So that wasn't completely the wrong way around, completely the wrong way around. It'll do exactly the same thing. And this applies for UZ as well, but I'm going to show you guys on a UZ exactly the same thing when I have my next harness, which is another three UZ that's coming up. Okay, so that's the one major thing that I see. Guys putting this the wrong way around. You see how it behaves, it basically tries to start and then it dies, okay? So, in a JZ's case, you can actually completely disconnect the math, right? So I'm gonna take that off, I'm gonna put that down there, and what it'll basically do is it'll go to a default. Now some of the vehicles are very difficult to start, like an ISO or GS200, you may have to start like two or three times, but she will run without it. So if I just go like that, See, so she didn't start. Okay, so I was just showing you there, obviously we've got to check engine light because the MAF is unplugged, all right? Now, when the MAF is the wrong way around, you don't get to check engine light, do you know why? Because the MAF is plugged in. It doesn't know that it's not there, okay? So, you can run a JZ without the MAF plugged in. Oh, what I'm not, I'm going to show you quickly now is what happens when you don't have the MAF plugged in. So, what are we going to do is, I'm going to rev it up. Basically, what you're going to see is we're going to hit like a 3000 RPM rev limiter. So, bear with me a second. Okay, second time. not very happy so basically yeah she'll hit like that little rev cut there's about 3000 rpm it'll go ram, 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 or do what it did in this case and just die out and then go back to idle or so on so that's what she'll do if the math is unplugged i've got another one which i've seen before in the past with people is they'll plug in the math and they'll think oh that's plugged in so she should run she's absolutely fine so let's see what happens if i plug in the math so obviously I'm not going to get a code, so I'm just going to rest that on there, and let's see what she does. Okay, so as you can imagine, the way a math works is it calculates the air that's flowing into the engine. If you plug in the math, 
but you don't have it in the air intake, it's not going to calculate anything. So the EC is going to think there's no air coming in. So therefore, it's going to give no fuel. She's not going to start. Simple as that. So if you're going to plug in the math, make sure it's in the airflow. Otherwise, you may as well not have it plugged in because it's going to be worse than having it not plugged in. Because as I've just demonstrated, don't plug it in. The car, she will start and run. She won't, she won't rev up, but she'll start and run. So not having the math plugged in is okay for this one. She will start off like one or two attempts and she will idle. She'll just give you a check engine light and she'll go into like a default mode, probably run a little bit rich. She'll just go off default tables on sort of airflow, etc. Um, turn the math the wrong way around, she won't start. And I know it does sound ridiculous because it's such a tiny little thing, but it has a massive effect. Literally, if you have it the wrong way around, she doesn't start. If you have it plugged in, but not in the airflow, she ain't going to start because the issue is going to think that there's no actual air flowing through. So what I'm also going to do now is I'm going to show you guys. Now, these diameters of these pipes obviously make a massive difference. Okay. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate now. So basically this is actually for an IS220D. So this is a much bigger pipe as you can see it goes over there. I've, I haven't measured a GS300 intake pipe, you know, the internal diameter to kind of see exactly what it is. Um, you'll notice I've got a little air filter taped up here and that's because they also don't like turbulent air. So that sort of smooths out the air before it comes into the air box. So that's why if you've noticed that, that's why that's taped on there, just to sort of give it a bit of smoother air. So what I'm going to basically do is I'm going to start the engine now, and I'm going to take this math box, and I'm going to move it slightly down. So I'm going to go like this. And what you're going to notice is as I move down like that, even the slightest little bit, you're going to see that the RPM is going to drop. Okay, so that's just to demonstrate how sensitive these maths are. So getting this pipe where the mass airflow sensor, the correct diameter, is, is crucial because obviously they've calibrated these maths in the standard software so that they know, you know, how much air is actually coming into the engine. You change the diameter of the pipe. If you make it big or you make it smaller, you're physically changing how much air is coming in. The problem, the thing you're not doing is you're not changing the calculation. So um, obviously you know how math works. Effectively, they pass a current through a wire. That wire gets cooled down by the air that passes through. They keep applying current and then they work out how much current needs to be applied and that determines the mass of the air flowing through the thingy. But that is completely dependent on the size of the pipe. So if you make this pipe too big or too small, you can obviously change the way that it does it. So you've seen some sort of aftermarket companies when they do these sort of math housings, they do weird things like they make little sort of squeezes in the middle like that. So that sort of speeds up the airflow right by the mass airflow sensor. So effectively what they're doing is they're making the engine think that there's more air coming in than there actually is, and then it richens up the mixture a little bit. So it's, it's things like that. I mean, that's things that you can do in terms of in terms of these. But if you look at the the, the, the uh, LS guys and so on, when they're using HP tuners, that's one of the things they have to do when they do this and they retain the math. They actually do a, a scaling up of the, of the mass airflow sensor because the pipe is bigger. So let me start it up quickly. I'm going to show you exactly how much of a difference it makes and how little I have to basically move that pipe off of there to show you what a difference it is. So let's do that now. So as you can see, I've literally got to move it a couple of millimeters down the pipe like that. You can see that the RPM is dropping and the whole engine note is changing. So just to give you an idea, if you had, uh, let's say like a 3UZ airbox, I think it's about 76 millimeter ID is this, is this pipe over here that you're working with over here. If you change that to 86 millimeters ID, that's whole 10, 10 millimeters. Now it may not seem like a lot, but do a calculation with cross-sectional area between an 86 millimeter ID pipe and a 76 millimeter ID pipe and see how much cross-sectional area is different between those. So that's another factor as well, is if you are getting a, a weird situation. Now, the ECU will do some sort of compensation. Obviously, it still has a lambda sensor. So if it does pick up that, um, you know, it's working out that it's pulling in, let's say, 
I don't know, theoretical number, 70 grams per second of air that it's pulling through. It's going to put the correct amount of fuel. It's going to hit the Lambda and the Lambda is going to go, hey, like we're super rich or we're super lean. So it's going to add fuel. But just remember the ECUs and standard management are only capable of correcting by I think it's about 20 or 25%. Once you hit that threshold of 20, 25%, it'll chuck his chuck a code for running rich or running lean. So yeah, so the important things are, one, it's got to be the right way around. Now, the other mass airflow sensors, which I'm going to see if I can try and get a hold of one. Where are they? Okay, just bear with me a second. I'm going to get some other mass airflow sensors, so bear with me. Okay, back in the room. So, you've got this little small one. This is a very common one. Uh, JZS171, uh, JZX110, IS300 later models, GS200 later models. Uh, then you got this one, this is the one of the JZX100. So these are very easy not to get the wrong way around because as you can see, that's nothing, that's got a hole. So straight away you can tell exactly which way is supposed to be facing the air filter, the side with the hole in it. All right, so these are not so difficult to get the wrong way around. Um, but obviously again, that, the same principles apply. If you were to plug this in and not put it in an actual airstream, it's going in the engine, it's gonna do sod all. Uh, and then there is one in between these ones are the common ones that you'll see. So like one UZ BVTI, two JZ GTE BVTI in the Aristo, um, early GS300, two JZ G BVTI. So that's like up until 2001, uh, 2001, they changed over and they went to the smaller one and it had like Tiptronic and stuff, you know, changing gears on the steering wheel, etc. So those ones are like a bullet. Well, I call them like a bullet cause they look like this. It looks like a bullet anyway. So yeah, so they have the same principle. They've got holes in one side and they're blank on the other. So again, very difficult to get the wrong way around. These are the ones I see everybody get the wrong way around. So again, just to recap, if this is the wrong way around, it's not gonna start. If this is not plugged in, a JZ will start. It'll just struggle the first couple of times and then it will start. If this is plugged in and not in the airstream, it's not gonna start. Obviously, if it's wired incorrectly, that's effectively going to see the same result. So if you have this the right way around, but it still doesn't start like that, then possibly this just wired incorrectly, okay? The trouble that I always have with people putting it the wrong way around is it doesn't throw a code because you've got the sensor plugged in and the sensor is there and the sensor is reading. So obviously the ECU goes, there's nothing wrong with the sensor. It's just that you're not, it's not reading any air. So there's no air coming, I'm not going to give any fuel. So that's the biggest problem is being the wrong way around. And obviously when it's wired incorrectly, then that'll obviously cause the exact same issue. But usually when it's wired incorrectly, you'll normally get a code of some sort, whether it's uh, you know, code 24 for intake air temperature sensor or code 31 for mass airflow sensor. So uh, hopefully this is helpful. Um, it's just, I, I see it all the time uh, with people with the mass, especially with the swaps, because you guys have the little pipes. Uh, you don't have like a complete air box like this. You have the little pipe, so you can basically, you know, you can flip it around 180 degrees and you can change the way it goes. Okay, but yeah, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, I will do one with the UZ. So I've got the three UZ. I'm busy with the three UZ harness now. So it'll be finished in the next day or two. Uh, and then I'll jump on that engine and I'll do the exact same thing. We'll go through exactly how it behaves when a mass sensor is, is all of the above. Pl put the wrong way around, plugged in, but not in airflow, etc. All right. Well, thanks for guys for watching. And again, if you have any comments or suggestions or questions or something you'd like me to do a video on. Again, I do keep a lookout on the Facebook groups and so on and so forth if I see something that the guys are interested in um, or that the guys are asking questions on or so on and so forth, I'll make a video uh, explaining it through as best I can. Um, sometimes I do need to wait until I'll have an engine or a harness built on an engine, uh, you know, that goes from there. Uh, but that's about the only constraint that I have effectively. Anyway, that's all good. I'll see you guys later and thanks for watching.